we will be starting the program close to Japanese time, which means prompt. <laughs> Welcome to the annual gathering to commemorate the signing of EO 9066, which triggered the incarceration of up to 120,000 people of Japanese descent. Two-thirds of them were American citizens. I'm Aggie Idemoto, uh, on the board for the Japanese American Museum of San Jose. The decision was to hold it in the actual site where people came to register. So this is a historic kind of a meaning here too. It all started with a poster that directed people to come to the men's gym, San Jose State College, as it was called at that time. And it has since been changed to the Yosh Uchida Hall. Um, I myself was incarcerated in um, the Assembly Center at Salinas Rodeo Grounds and then spent three and a half years of my life at Poston, Arizona, one of the ten uh, war relocation authority camps. And pray for peace. I pray that we can build a society which we become one beyond God, religion, race, and thought. Please encourage and strengthen those who are gathered at today's day of remembrance. All these things we pray. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sensei. But San Jose State also has a historic importance. The old men's gym was the assembly point for Japanese Americans in the South Bay on the way to the concentration camps. After this evening's program here in Moore Staley Auditorium, we will have a procession to the men's gym now Yoshichita Hall for a reception and more continue the program. As Eggie mentioned, the theme of this year's Day of Remembrance is war hysteria. In 1983, the federal government commission on wartime relocation and internment of civilians, or the CWRIC, concluded that the World War II concentration camps for Japanese Americans was not justified by military necessity. Rather, the camps were based on, and I quote, race prejudice, war hysteria, and a failure of political leadership. Hello, everyone. Um, so to just start off, I'd like to say that it's such an honor to be here today. Um, we all know that the Japanese Americans have undergone such trials and hardships in the past, and for me to speak on a day like this, the Day of Remembrance, really speaks to the compassion and goodwill that the Japanese Americans have extended towards us Muslims in San Jose. Undoubtedly, Islamophobia and discrimination against Muslims and Islam and all that are extremely prevalent in the state of California. And I'm grateful, I'm so lucky to live here where stereotypes and discrimination, etc., isn't too present towards like a Vietnamese American Muslim like myself. Yet the stereotypes, the Islamophobia, discrimination still exists and still impacts us. Will Kako asked me to read a poem, and it was uh, kind of a serendipity that this poem is actually about the registration of Japanese Americans at uh, now Chita Hall um, on May 23, 1942. Since I was part of JAM, or Japanese American Museum of San Jose, I knew the history but I never really understood the emotional and family toll it took on the people who actually went through that process. And Jimmy will be talking about that, his own experiences later. But he and I sat for almost two hours, and this is the result of uh, my learning how it impacted him as a 19-year-old man. The title, Civil Control Station, Registration. San Jose State Campus, Men's Gymnasium. May 23rd, 1942. Acrid tang of sweat, 
change the air. Katsuro and his brother on bleachers waited to receive further instructions as persons of Japanese ancestry. At the table, he gave his full name, Katsuro Sato. When the identification tags touched his hand, 32165E stood in his place. Family number 32165, third son. His older brother, 32165C, exhaled. It's happening. They're going to move us out. Stunned, Katsuro wanted to run, hide, disappear. Words flashed before his eyes. Evacuate by May 30th. Bedding, clothing, essential personal effects. No pets, two suitcases. Report to trains at San Pedro Street. Voices pulsated through his head. We're citizens. Seven days? Who will feed Smokey? Not much room for baby sister's diapers. The Butsudan won't fit either. Tomatoes already planted. Would Sumiko be on the same train? Posters on poles assassinated his aspirations. His life careened toward a desolate void. Stripped of his name, reality cascaded around him. 32165E no union job, no farm, no home. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for giving me this opportunity to share some thoughts with you. And if you notice on the program, it says meditation. And uh, what I'd like to share with you is talk specifically about religion, but not any specific religion. And there are many passages here, but I think um, it gives us an opportunity to think and reflect upon our own selves. And the self that's being mentioned in this passage is uh, an interdependent self, not just a small individualistic self, but one that's tied in with all the people uh, in our lives and in the world. Assalamu alaikum. Greetings of peace. Thank you all so much for being here tonight on what is an important opportunity for us to reflect on the fact that so much of what we see in today's news broadcasts impacting the Muslim American community is not new for our country. I remember immediately after 9-11 two distinct thoughts. The first was appreciation for members of the Japanese American community and so many other allies who came forward and said, we know what our history looks like, and we want to ensure that it won't happen again. And the second was this hope that this might just be a passing phase, that it would end in a few weeks. Those few weeks became a few months, and now they've become a few years. We're coming up on two decades in another couple of years. And what I've learned is that we have to build together we have to reflect on our history, that unfortunately, it is as American as apple pie to target minority communities during wartime. That means that I spent a total of 38 hours during my lifetime listening to the same types of speeches that you were able to hear tonight. And because my parents were on the board of the Nihomachi Outreach Committee that organizes this event, I never, not once, got to leave early to go grab some food instead. <laughs> so I guess in a way you could say my appreciation for the Day of Remembrance was a process. 
When I was little, all I really looked forward to was carrying my candle during the candlelight procession and feeling the taiko drums vibrate the ground during their performance. But as I grew older, I finally began to develop the patience to start to listen to the speeches that were being presented. Japanese Americans were first interned during 1942. I don't know about you, I'm addressing the young people now, but when I picture 1942, all I picture is grainy black and white photos with no real application to my life. The only thing that really ever successfully connected me back to having any emotional a connection to that time was hearing the sto about the stories my grandma had from her time in Heart Mountain and the speeches I heard at this event over the years. Something that made an even bigger impression on me was seeing the people from my parents' generation, who weren't born yet when the Japanese were interned, come up here every year to keep the memory of what happened alive. It moved me that although they had not experienced being interned themselves, they felt a strong desire to keep awareness of this moment of history alive so that it would hopefully never be repeated. There is a phrase that goes, no history, no self, and conversely to that, to know history is to know self. Learning about how my community was affected by the internment camps helped me explore my identity for both my cultural heritage and as an American in general. Good evening, everyone. It is an honor to be here today. Thank you to the Nihon Machi Outreach Committee for inviting me today and for organizing this event. As I look upon the crowd, I see many community members here to commemorate the signing of Executive Order 9066, which led to the incarceration of 120,000 people of Japanese descent across the country. My name is Marugawa. I'm also a performing member of San Jose Taiko. As Alex mentioned, being part of this event is one of the favorite performances of San Jose Taiko because of how deeply rooted we are in both the Japanese and Japanese American community. The event is also important for me personally because my own relatives um, obviously were interned and it, it helps me learn about them and remember where I came from. Japanese Americans were not treated as citizens or people during the internment. It also alludes to the fact that when the piece was composed in 2007, the majority of Americans did not know that the internment had even happened. The second half of the piece celebrates how the Japanese American and Muslim American communities stood together post 9-11 to show the best of what this country is about. The piece ends as it begins as a reminder of the lessons in history that needs to be shared and passed on. This message of sharing really resonates with me because one of my first experiences as a San Jose Taiko apprentice was traveling with the group to participate and perform at the 2009 Tule Lake pilgrimage. Only a few months prior to the trip, my grandma had passed away, but it wasn't until the pilgrimage that I realized that I had so many unanswered questions about her and my family's experiences at the Tule Lake internment camp. One of my homework assignments in the eighth grade was to conduct an, inter an inter interview. Excuse me. I was. I feel so lucky to have this. So I did. I chose to ask my grandma about her internment experience, and to this day, I feel so lucky to have that simple but meaningful homework assignment documented so that I can share it with my future family. I feel just as lucky to be able to hear firsthand experiences and stories over the years at this event from Jimmy Yamaichi and later tonight and our other speakers from tonight. Thank you so much for sharing and passing your stories on to us. Manzanar, Kelly. 